will talk about it. He is consultant in nephrologist from Jaidas Hospital, Ahmedabad. So, over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you to RSSDI West Bengal chapter for having me. Uh, my talk is for 17 minutes. Uh, trust me, the next 17 minutes is going to save you perhaps 17 minutes every week. So that's you know what I'm aiming at in terms of optimization uh, today. So you know what we're going to discuss today. Don't think of it as a as a tech. Uh, enterprise or as a as a company or as a institution think of it as an experiment as a research as a laboratory right so whatever i'm going to what i'm going to show you these are all bits and pieces of research uh, research done at a, at an era where we are trying to combine our medical knowledge and expertise with a little bit of technological knowledge and expertise so that is the whole idea of the entire talk so the talk is artificial intelligence for doctors, especially doctors who treat patients with diabetes and endocrine conditions. So in the next few minutes, we'll do three things. We'll solve a complex endocrine case, we'll generate a prescription for a newly diagnosed patient with type 2 diabetes, and we'll generate a presentation on a random topic, renal tubular acidosis. We'll actually generate a presentation, right? So AI in medicine is not a new thing. In fact, AI in medicine has been around for a long period of time. It's like, you know, you see this, this is ELISA. ELISA is ELISA. ELISA was developed in 1960. This was the first precursor of the modern chat GPT way back in 1960. But for a long period of time, because of poor quality of technological advancements in other fields, uh, AI was often kept in a back burner and that is what is known as the period of era from the 1950s and 60s to 2020s is known as the AI winter and that was a period of time where a lot of development for AI actually stalled because of lack of infrastructure which could back this. 2020 onwards and post COVID especially 2023 this is the era which is known as AI spring right we are in a we are, whether we believe it or not, in an era of artificial intelligence right now. In fact, we are sitting here because we took an aircraft which uses AI. A lot of our presentations I saw today have, you know, uh, Microsoft Designer, which is an AI model, right? So we are already using AI. It's only, you know, creative ways in which we can use it better. So there are three subfields of AI which you will hear about a lot uh, in today's era. One is what is known as computer vision. Computer vision, I'll show you an example of this. Computer vision is how you put in an image of a, of a MRI and it'll tell you whether your patient has a pituitary microadenoma or not. Right? That's computer vision. Then you have what is known as a natural language processing, NLP. You know, you, you uh, opening your mobile phone and asking Siri to do something. Siri, when is my, when, what is the weather in Kolkata today? That is NLP, natural language processing. So Siri understands what you're saying. Right? translates it to the computer language and gives you an answer which you can understand in a common plain English. Right? And third is what is now really uh, emerging is what is known as generative AI. And generative AI is where you can actually use your creative potential to actually use, uh, develop, generate things like images, articles, uh, tweet posts and etc. Right? So that is what is known as generative AI. So let's solve a complex endocrine case using AI and you can, you know, I'll tell you the step by step process what we'll be doing and if you, you know, uh, want to, you know, uh, tag along with me, uh, please be my guest. So we had, this is a real patient, right? We had this patient who is a 16 year old patient who presented with a prior history of recurrent fractures with a trivial trauma. He presented the emergency with a severe lower limb weakness and on lab assessment he had hypokalemia, metabolic acidosis and normal anion gap. Right? These are all data which even an MBBS student will be able to kind of give, right? give as inputs. So when you ask your you know, emergency resident, uh, ER resident, uh, what is this patient? He'll quickly tell you, 16 year old boy, a history of recurrent trauma, presented with lower limb weakness, has hypokalemia. Okay, what's his ABG? It's uh, you know, my metabolic acidosis with normal anion gap, right? Simple thing. Let's see if, now this seems like an endocrine case. I'm sure a lot of, you know, I, I can see some wonderful endocrinologists in the audience who would have made the diagnosis, right? But let's see if AI, which is like a, you know, uh, perhaps a first year DM resident, will he or she be able to solve this as a case, right? So uh, 
let's do this. So, you know, you go to this Endo AI, which we have developed. Again, this is a laboratory, right? Don't consider this as a product. It's a lab. It's an experiment, right? So you go in, you, uh, you know, log into this, right? And this is, I'm showing you a real life example of what, you know, uh, we could do, right? So log into this uh, system, right? Okay. And then you go to the home page, which is this, right? And then you go to uh, notes in endocrinology AI, right? And then put in this question. So I just copied this question, copied and pasted this question. Let's see whether our first year resident in endocrinology, uh, which is our endo AI, is able to answer this, right? So treat him as a first year resident. He might make mistakes, right? So, uh, you know, let's see. So this is the likely diagnosis is distal renal tubular acidosis with hypokalemia treatment. This is real life example, right? Would you agree to this diagnosis? I'm sure a lot of you, maybe a third year or maybe, maybe, uh, maybe sir would give you more differential diagnosis. But like I said, think of it as a first year DM resident, right? Okay, great. So this is the output which it has said, right? Likely diagnosis is renal tubular acidosis with hypokalemia. The line of treatment would be this. Now, remember the input I have given to this are basic inputs, which like I said, an MBBS doctor would be able to give. We are also happy that we have, you know, partnered with now, partnered with Endotext. Endotext, a lot of you would be aware about it. Some of you will be authors of this as well. Endotext is the largest clinical resource for endocrinology. It originally started by Leslie DeGroote. Uh, again, we are happy to say that actually we have now partnered with Endotext to the context, the information which is going to be fed into the Endo AI system will be now Endotext, right? So not only would you get answers from Endotext written by some of the best authors you can see uh, in the field of endocrinology, but also you'll get a reference to that and you will be able to read more about it or from the chapter based on endotex. So this is again a little bit of an experiment uh, which, which is now perhaps a successful experiment. We are also coming up with the app for this. So app is also similar to you know uh, what we showed you, right? So you, you know, put in the question, it will give you the answer, but you will be able to chat with it. So you can ask follow up questions just like your you know examiner in your you know uh, you know dm exam would ask you or you know say okay fine so you said this is this you know what would be the next step so in this you know let's say we put this as an input right again a clinical case so 38 year old female presents with complaints of headache blurry vision and so on she has hypokalemia hypertension she's on antihypertensive medications her blood pressure is high you can see the reports uh, potassium is 3.3 could this be an endocrine cause of hypertension this is the question i'm asking right so this is the answer right so it says yes it could be a potential endocrine cause it tells you the reason why it is so and then next question we ask him as a follow-up question what test should i do to perform to confirm the diagnosis of endocrine cause of hypertension here is giving you measure plasma renin aldosterone ratio i'm sure you'll agree with this right resistant hypertension hypokalemia right uh, oral salt suppression test it is also telling you the uh, confirmatory test and so on and so forth right so these are the things right and then we said we put in the values right so the lab values are as follows aldosterone is 16 aldosterone renin ratio is 38 potassium is 40 uh, does this patient have uh, what's the next best step it says the patient has primary aldosteronism and this so this is the output right so i think you know that's the whole idea right so this is part one so i hope uh, you know this well the idea is to help help doctors make better diagnosis right and that's the whole idea right again you know uh, like i said we'll be doing more so let's generate a prescription for a patient with newly diagnosed diabetes so this is a case uh, you know this is a typical patient 40 year old type 2 diabetic patient hpnc is 8.9 obese Creat is 1.2, fasting is 190, post meal is 210, LDL is 105. Basic data, all the kind of time kind of data that you put in this age. So we have developed another module specifically for diabetes and that is uh, what we call as diabetology.co.in. Uh, you know, again, you enter all this data here uh, in, in this uh, module here, right? So, yeah, so put in all this data. So put in the data which is given. So you, you know, enter the data here. So this is again, so we are taking all the kind of information, right? You can enter whatever information is available to you. You may not be able to, you may, you know, you might not have all the information. For example, you also included C peptide and other things, you know, which may, you may not have. So, you know, you had Dr. Uh, Beatrice talk about, uh, you know, her studies on FCPD. Well, uh, you could enter those, you know, kind of data. So let's put all this clinical data over here, right? So you're putting the patient's blood pressure, you're putting the, uh, whether he's on anti-hepatitis medication, his, his weight of the patient, right? Uh, it'll calculate the BMI for you, right? Quickly, it calculates the BMI, right? Whether the patient has retinopathy or not, triglycerides, HDL levels, LDL levels is 102, right? So you're doing this, right? Uh, okay, patient doesn't have ketosis, fasting blood sugar is 190, 
post meal is 210 i think yeah uh, hpa1c was 8.9 okay c peptide we can just skip uh, creatinine is 1.2 urine microalbumin is 34 uh, and potassium value is normal 4.7 okay so patient you can also give personalized things mid income of the patient is patient open to injectables other things right okay yeah so you can check this out this is all freely available like i said these are all experiments here so there it generates a recommendation right so first it gives you a cluster classification which is based on dr mohan's paper so it'll tell you what cluster it belongs to it will tell you whether the patient needs insulin or not it will tell you the diabetic kidney disease status egfr of the patient other things cardiovascular risk reduction diabetes remission potential personalized hp1c target and so on it will give you the treatment and it will tell you why each of the treatment things are there why why would you uh, you know why would you give this patient a rosuvastatin why would you give a telmisartan and so on right and it generates the prescription for you right so right so it gives you a prescription right at the bottom right this is in this is real time okay it, it's a real time uh, development okay right so this is the this is the prescription which is generated again you know you can always debate with a first year dm resident but i would rather not right like i said this is a first year dm resident don't debate with it right uh, you would have a you know you would probably teach it right you you not you know berate it so that's the idea right this is the treatment it says you know you should give rosuvastatin tell me certain metformin depagliflozin uh, you know b12 well you would agree right most of us would agree right okay so this uh, you know luckily is funded by rssti uh, we are in west bengal rssti chapter so this we got this a small research grant for developing this by rssti and finally this is something you know uh, which you get you know i think all of you must be you know eagerly awaiting for this right making a presentation right off the bat right without doing much okay so this is there is an app this is a third party app we are trying to integrate endo ai with the third party app to develop this this is called a gamma app right so this is gamma this is again this is not our app so this is somebody else's development but we are trying to integrate our uh, product with that so uh, what you do is you go there you convert text to ai right so you say that you know i am i am looking for a presentation uh, for renal tubular acidosis my audience are group of experienced endocrinologists so i put then i put in my notes on so you know you would have you would have done some readings so you put in some notes in that you can determine the length of the presentation the you know what kind of presentation you want images and all just do this click generate okay now we want to develop a uh, you know thing on you can of course choose the uh, color and images and all that right so you go there click continue and there you go so real time it is developing a presentation now look hands off i am not doing anything right this is real time development okay so now you would say what's the use of it that if yesterday you attended dr mohan shenoy's talk on right okay uh, I, uh, obviously he would have changed a lot of things but the base we made through this right uh, through the thing you know on on uh, i think his talk was an empty cellar right so so what we did was we took endo ai we took the material from endo ai which comes from endo text right so it's a you know a very reliable robust resource we took the data fed it into the system generated the presentation send it to mohan that's it right 5 minutes off okay so yeah so this is the output uh, you can in fact you know see this presentation it's well right so this is the output which you have okay so you know we, of course this is just like i said uh, the beginning right we are working on more things we are again working on a uh, computer vision model for tirads which is called as ml tirads uh, again you know you put in the uh, patient's image right uh, okay so i'll yeah so put in the image of the patient uh, this is still very very nascent so this is like a like i said a you know first year radiology resident not even first year super specialty resident right we are still doing very new things here right so you upload the image it will tell you only the first step of a tirads calculation which is basically it will tell you the composition of the thyroid nodule whether it is a solid so it says it's likely a solid composition not only that it will tell you it is 64% confident with this we actually did a clinical study based on that which uh, we presented as an abstract in its con uh, we are publishing that very soon so that's the whole idea okay so this is a computer vision thing we are developing for thyroid nodule uh, right and then we also developing a a tool called endodynamic again this is where you know we need your help uh, 
this is again these are all new ideas right we uh, so what we are trying to do is we are taking your research right uh, the point which i am trying to make uh, with endo dynamic is that you know you you have written a paper which is excellent let's say you have worked very hard to it but a lot of the time the the uh, you know information which comes from the paper is not really used in clinical practice for example again you know uh, you have this paper down there uh, lt4 absorption subramaniam et al which was published in ijem recently they have given a very nice protocol for lt4 absorption right now a lot of you might not have read it some of you would have read it might not have digested it would have read it and forgotten it right instead of that you use your paper right give it to us we'll actually make it into a program right this is done using ai we'll make it into a code we'll make it into a program which people can use more often for example as an example we put this pcos screening tool i'll just wind up pcos screening tool by dr kalra which is a publication again uh, i think in uh, igm right so he made this tool you know so these are question and answer format we made it into a made it into a app right where again the app can be then you can you know share it with your uh, referring doctors or you could share it with your with your residents you can share it with your students right uh, so that you know they can use the same information in a in a mathematical way right so that's the whole idea right so we can all work together the idea is to collaborate once again i'm saying these are none of these have any commercial uh, maybe but right now i not made any money in fact cost a lot of money making a lot of these things so these are all experiments these are all lab these are all you know consider this like a like a research paper but in a computer computerized form that's the whole idea right so we can all do this together and like i said you know the really something which i feel is is the uh, most i feel the big idea here is to convert your research work into an application which uses ai i think that perhaps would make your you know research work live longer you know a lot of these uh, formulas and other things we use you know we use egfr calculators you use ckd epi right it's available as a mathematical calculation app if you ask somebody the the mathematics is, is so complicated that really you can't you know really do that calculation sitting with your calculator yeah you need an app for that right so if since it is made into an app it is more popular right the same way anything which is made simpler is more popular so if you have a research paper which if you feel can be converted into a little bit of an app right give it to us right you own all the rights to it it's your research paper it's your baby right our our job is just to convert it into something which more people can use it in a more wider sense right so this is the summary and thank you for patience Thank you, sir, for your interesting discussion. Uh, sir, you can ask. Om, thank you. This is very enlightening. Thank you, sir. Uh, all this work has been done by you, or do you have some computer guys, some AI guys helping you? Well, sir, most of the work is uh, well driven by me. Uh, I seek help of people wherever I get stuck. So, uh, you know, I don't have a tech team which develops a lot of things for me. I have collaborators. So. if there is a problem which really something which i cannot solve uh, in terms of the technology aspect of it i seek help of somebody Because who is if you, if who is you an have expert. some computer savvy guy who is doing ai ml etc you can go a little bit further right get yeah. all the differential diagnosis complicated issues Correct. but yes. this, this is uh, at least i'm i'm very happy that i'm you know about to retire i'm i'm a bit worried about the <laughs> uh, fabulous presentation of as usual uh, just uh, kind of a uh, question regarding the problem of uh, ai hallucination yeah. i mean that's a real problem even if you ask ai with generation of citations yes and 1/3 to 50% up to 50% of citations can be totally kind of it looks very convincing but it's totally wrong there is no uh, such uh, this there no such citation is act actually exist yes so i mean how to uh, solve this problem and how to diagnose and how to treat rather this kind of hallucination yes so very very excellent question uh, in fact you use the right term the term which is now used by ai people is hallucination uh, unfortunately this this problem actually was a first generation chat gpt problem uh, which is now sort of solved to a lot of extent uh, what you said is very right the first first model of chat gpt uh, which came out in public uh, hallucinated and generated random uh, you know uh, citations 
Not only that, it also ran, it generated random citations in court cases where some lawyer actually got stuck right with that. It, it is a known known situation. This is a fact. Uh, like I said, you know, sometimes you know you have some some resident who walks into your uh, you know uh, institution on the first day, makes a horrible mistake, which which sticks with him for the rest of his three years of residency. This is the same issue which happened probably with ChatGPT. Now they have certain uh, plugins which are, for example, there's a plugin called Scholarly Air, which searches PubMed and finds you citation from PubMed which are authentic. It gives you a link. You can open that citation. It will give you the citation also in different formats. So that problem to a lot of extent is solved. Uh, the newer models which you see, which is now you use the chat GPT-4 model, which is extremely well uh, versatile and the hallucination is much lower. Having said that, having said that, there is still hallucination. There are still problems, right? Uh, this is the entire there is an entire science behind it called prompt engineering, which you can do to solve the problem. In fact, we took a lot of time solving this specific problem when we developed Endo AI, right? So it's a problem. Uh, you know, that's the secret sauce where uh, that's that's what you use to solve the problem. Right? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Om Lakhani. This is nice listening to you. I think this is the third time I'm listening to you. Thanks. Now, there is another side of this thing. For our doctors, colleagues, those who are specially experienced on the other side of the sixth or something like that, the earlier we get some knowledge, some practical knowledge in AI, it is much, much better. AI has come in everywhere in our life. If you invest in the share market, there is also AI that will guide you. And another thing is that one PhD guy who has done his PhD in AI from Texas, he was telling me the other day, you see Dr. Bhattacharya, your job will be changed in the near future. The patients will give this data to this kind of these things. And this generation will come that what will be the diagnosis, what medicine I should take, and what should be the investigations on the hand of the patients also. Do you think it will be like that, sir? Yes, it will definitely change, sir. I think it, it would be, uh, you know, very wrong to say that our practice is not going to change. Our practice is going to change in the next coming five years, I would say, not even ten years. A lot of the things which we'll be doing will be changing, right? Uh, especially now, if you see, uh, there is something called deep learning algorithms which are coming. Deep learning algorithms, if you have seen, you know, if you are on social media, you have seen this, that based on an X-ray, it is able to make a diagnosis of a valvular heart disease. Right? Make a correct diagnosis of a valvular heart disease. Or based on the histopath, uh, you know, slides, it is able to make a diagnosis of the genetic potential, potentially genetic uh, disorder. So these are what is known as deep learning. Uh, the point is that end of the day, you are still the decision maker. Yes. Sir. Right? So you will use, you will use all of these as tools. Just like perhaps in the past you had a, you had a CT scan for diagnosing a pituitary tumor. Now you have an MRI for diagnosing the same and now you have a three Tesla MRI with a various kinds of sequencing which makes your diagnosis better. The same way you will be using instead of just a regular Google search, you will be using an endo AI model to make better diagnosis uh, for your patients, right? So that's the whole idea that from moving from books to computers to, to AI, right? That is what we are moving right. So 